You know, I have always loved growing giant sunflowers. Now, I like small sunflowers too, and I do plant them. Now, they're the ones that have the little flowers that come out all along the tall branch. They just send out little stems, and on those little stems, they have little tiny sunflowers. Oh, probably about six inch diameter. But I just dearly love giant sunflowers. There's just something about them being about the size of a tree and growing so tall. And some of them will grow up to 10 to 14 feet and they will have a flower on the top of them that stretches anywhere from 10 to 16 inches. Now it all depends on the seed that you get and the genes that are in that seed. So I have a few seeds left over from last year's plant and it was a 10 or 11 foot plant and it was a mammoth sunflower and it grew to have a flower on it that was anywhere from about oh 12 to 13 inches across. So I still have some of those seeds. I like to plant my sunflower seeds anywhere from three to four inches deep. So I just dig a little hole and good three inches down is good enough because once the sunflower starts coming up, you can mound up the dirt around it. Now, if you've got something like a mammoth sunflower seed and you know you're going to have a tall plant, you want it to have a good base so that when those roots go down, it's going to hold up all that weight, especially when the flower on it gets to be 12 or 13 inches across, it's going to weigh a lot. And so I planted that one right there. I'm gonna plant another one, say a foot and a half to two feet apart. Now remember, these are mammoth or giant sunflowers. So when they grow, they're going to get really huge. So the soil for your giant sunflower plant doesn't have to be anything in particular. It doesn't have to be mulch. Doesn't have to be any great soil. It can grow pretty much anywhere. Now, if you have better soil for it to grow in, of course, it's going to grow taller and it's going to reach more of its genetic potential, but it really doesn't have to be that great of soil. So if you do want your sunflower to reach its, well, its genetic potential once again, then of course, you know, plant it somewhere in some good mulchy soil, something that's well draining, and you'll get a large sunflower. Now, as your sunflower starts to grow and as you water it, it's going to come up and it's not going to look like anything, anything special. Actually, some people have said that when they see their sunflowers coming up, they've thought they were weeds and they've gone ahead and just pulled them out. And it does pretty much look like a weed that's coming up. Uh, nothing fantastic about it. Looks a little bit along the lines of a zinnia coming up. Now, depending on where your sunflower was planted and how much water it gets, it'll either start looking tall and spindly with a lot of water and poor soil, or it'll look fat and lush if it's got really good soil and a moderate amount of water. Now, these are examples of different kinds of sunflowers. Some of them are mammoth, and some of them are the smaller ones that put out flowers all along the stalk. So you can see this one, it's already blooming a main sunflower, but this one will also have the sunflowers that come out all along the stalk. And these are really pretty sunflowers also. I think my heart just belongs to the mammoth sunflower though. Now, whether it becomes a giant or a mammoth sunflower, like I said, all depends on the amount of water it gets and the soil that it's in. And sunflowers are also nice to use as a border. Let's say up against an ugly old fence, you can put your sunflowers all along the fence and it'll give the fence just something, a little pop. And the yellow from the flowers are just really pretty. Now this sunflower is one that's just getting ready to bloom. And perhaps you can see the difference in the size of the leaves and just the overall look of the plant. It looks different than the ones that are up against the fence that get very little water and are in poor soil. This one is in a flower bed where I have a lot of zinnias, uh, marigolds, four o'clock plants, and diff other different flowers. So it has a little bit of mulch and fertilizer worked into the soil, plus it's watered more often. So it's a healthier looking plant. So here's a good example of a sunflower that has gotten so much water in it and has gotten so heavy that it's taken the whole stalk and pulled the stalk over. And all you really need to do to harvest a sunflower is either twist it around or you can just pop it sideways. And what I did was I twisted this one off just by turning it around and I was able to take it off. So now these seeds are almost all dried out and they're ready to be harvested. 
Well, there's nothing special to harvesting sunflower seeds. It's really very easy. And you can see that that one I just took off the stem had some birds that had come down and started pecking out the seeds. But I would definitely recommend putting on a good pair of gloves because the face of the sunflower is just very prickly. And as you take out those seeds, you're gonna to wanna to have something that you can rub against the sunflower and take the seeds out. So as you split the sunflower in two, a lot of seeds are just going to fall off. And what you can do after you get those little pieces, like I said, just have a good pair of gloves and rub your hand against the sunflower seed. When I go in and I put them in a bag, and I, if I put them in a Ziploc bag, I won't zip it up all the way. I'll leave it open so that the rest of the moisture can come out of the seeds. Now I'm gonna try and cut this one. I think this is my biggest stalk. I'm gonna try and cut it with just some nippers. Well, that one came down fast and it's because it still had a sunflower on the end of it. So here's another sunflower head that I can take seeds off of. And all you have to do to get the yellow part off is scratch it with your fingers. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Just scratch the pollinated tops off of the sunflower. And then you have a lot of seeds that you need to take out of the sunflower head. Well, these sunflowers with the big stems and the really big roots <laughs> are just a little hard to take out of the ground. Now, it's a good thing that this is growing in mulch, or I'd have to just cut it off at the base with a saw and leave the roots in the ground to just rot. Look at that dirt. That is some really good soil. That came directly out of my compost bin. Now my compost had a lot of wood chips, wood mulch, and then just different things from out of the garden that were decomposing. <laughs> There's another timber. <laughs> there it goes. Well, <laughs> since these sunflowers are growing in with my tomatoes, I really don't want to take them completely out, or I'm not going to take them completely out because along with their roots, I would get the tomatoes roots too, and I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna take part of these sunflowers and hopefully not let them drop on the tomatoes. Timber, there goes another one. This is also going to allow the tomatoes to get more sun timber and produce more tomatoes. Oh. That's it for harvesting sunflowers today and just a little bit on the life of a giant sunflower, how you plant them and uh, what you do if you put them in regular soil or uh, amended soil and how much they'll grow or what they'll look like as you know depends on how much water you give them and then how tall a mammoth sunflower will grow and how many seeds you can get from it, and it's quite a few. So I'm gonna go lay these down by the garbage where I laid the other ones, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye, you guys.